Hey guys, welcome back to another Python GIS tutorial. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these Python tutorials, so hopefully you haven't missed them too much. But if you remember in our last one, we did some raster math uh, using GDAL and NumPy. Well, we had some problems with no data on the edges, and we're going to go in and address how to work with no data values today. So I have here my um, elevation raster that I've been using loaded up. And if you don't have this raster and want it, you can download it. Um, I have a video that shows how to down, download this exact digital elevation model, and I can link that in the cards above. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. This is the script from last time. I'm going to go ahead and create a new script. We'll add a new one here. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use uh, like a copy of this raster. Actually, I don't want to modify my original one. So I'm going to make a copy of it so that I don't affect that original when I do some operations here. So let's go ahead and we'll import GDAL. And then let's get our base file name here, which I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy that over from this previous script. Save ourselves a little bit of time. And then we'll do a new file name. And this, is where I'm going to this is where I'm going to copy this raster to. Uh, we'll do the same file name, uh, we'll call it nodeda.tiff, all right, and then um, we're going to go ahead and copy this raster, and we need to get a GDAL driver to do that, so we'll call this driver, this equals GDAL.get driver by name, and we want the GTIFF driver. Um, and we're going to need to also open our original data set. So we're going to um, call it, we'll call it copy DS. The one we're going to copy is going to be gdal.open. And we're going to open the file name. Okay, and now we can take our driver, and we can create a copy. And we're going to give it the data set to copy, so our copy DS, and then we're going to give it our new file name. And here we want to just, we'll just name this DS for our data source. All right, I'll double check that, make sure I have the arguments correct, and then I'll come back. All right, so I actually got these backwards, guys. My apologies, we want the file name first. Well, oh, that should be new FN. And then we want the uh, copy DS. We're almost going to put in the strict equals zero here. That means that if something doesn't line up exactly right, it will still create a copy for us. So that's going to give us um, a new data source. And we'll leave it at that. Okay. So now we have our data source we want to work with. And what we want to do is we want to we find out what that no data value is. And now, remember how there can be multiple bands in a raster. Each of those bands could potentially have a different no data value. So in order to find out um, the no data value for the raster, this one only has one band, we need to get that band. Okay, so we can do that by ds.get um, raster band and number one and no data see, I think it's get no data value. And I'll show you a little trick here that we can do. So this is a GDAL raster band. So we can do GDAL, and we're going to do dot band, and then we can click dot, we can get get no data value. See, there's the function right there. Now this line of code won't work because it's just the, gener the generic function, but it allows us to look at what it is. All right, so we're going to do get no data value, um, let's go ahead and we'll print this out. Actually, let's just call it NDV equals. Let's go ahead and click print uh, NDV. And now when we run this, um, it's going to print up a no data value. Okay, um, we need to come down here then. We need to go... Um, yeah, ds equals none, 
and uh, close this one also. Copy DS equals none. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. It'll just print out, print out the no data value over in the console for us. Click run, and there it is. A really small or small large magnitude negative number. Um, 3.4 times 10 to the 38th. Okay. Now what I can do is uh, let's just go ahead and comment out some of these things. So we can comment this and we can comment all this. We don't need to run that again every time. And here we can substitute ds equals gl open new fn. Okay, so now I want to point out something about this number that may not be super obvious. This is the largest magnitude number that a float data type can be. It has the maximum number of digits allowed for storage in the flow data type. So what if I multiply this number by something um, and then try and load that raster back up? It might cause some problems or it might just default back to this number and the calculation can happen, which would be okay because that's just no data value. Okay, but what we might want to do is we might want to, when we're doing the calculations here, we might want to just not have the calculations run on our no data value. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we can get rid of our print no data value. And I'm going to show you how we can do this. So let's call this band one. And we're going to do ds.getRasterBand1.read as array. It's going to read it as a numpy array. And we can do band one. And we're going to find band one where it equals our no data value, we're going to say it's going to be np.nan. That means not a number. Okay. And I'll print this out so you can see what it looks like. It's just going to print out nan. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, we have an error. np is not defined. So we need to import nump as np. Now let's click run. See, there you go. I just printed out nan. Now, let's go ahead and we'll print out band 1 before and after we do this. So print band 1. It's probably just going to print the first row or the first couple rows, first few values, and then we'll print band 1 here. I'm going to get rid of printing the np nan, and let's click run again. Okay. So here you see it printed out the first um, few data points here, and the last few, these dot, 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 means there's more in the middle, and here it did the same thing with the NANDs. Um, so you can see that we have this really large magnitude negative number here, and then down here we have NAN. Okay, now, let's go ahead and just do an operation. Let's do uh, band one times 2.0. Band 1 equals band 1 times 2.0. And let's just see what happens as we do this. We're going to print band 1. Do band 1 equals band 1 times 2.0 after we change the no data values. Okay, and I'm actually going to have to read this again just in case it gets changed. So we'll do that. We'll put that in there, okay? So right here we're changing band one, and so my no data value is no longer going to be the same if that happens. So that's why I'm reading it again to get the original data back, okay? So let's go ahead and click run. And see, we get this negative infinite here. When we try to multiply that, this is telling us that your value is too big to fit into the memory space allotted. Okay, that's what happens from this operation right here. But when I do it with the NANs, you can see the NANs remain unchanged. Okay, so now what I can do is let's say I run my operation, I ran everything multiplied by 2, and I want to change those data values back, then I can go band 1, band 1 equals the NDV, and now 
or sorry, this is gonna be equal to np.nan. I'm gonna change that back to the no data value. So now when this gets printed out, what should happen is when I print this out, I'll get this same negative, negative infinite. And when I print this out, I'll get my original no data value. So let's go ahead and click run here. Okay, so that actually didn't happen. You see we still have those NANs. Let me look and just see what went wrong there. Okay, so I think we just need to check to see if these are NAN in a different way. So we'll keep those brackets, but instead of doing band one equals equals np.nan, we'll do np.isnan band one. So we'll throw it into a function. Let's go ahead and try that. And there you go. So that converted it back. Okay. So that's how you can deal with those no data values. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid um, of everything down here. Okay. Uh, we worked on how we can change those to NAN numbers, or to not a number with NumPy. Now we're going to work on how we can actually change the no data value. So I have this NDV here. Let's say I want to make um, a new no data value. Let's get rid of this line of code, and we're going to change my no data value to negative 9999.0. Okay. And there are two things I needed to do to do that. First of all, oh, sorry, we need to keep this and let's do new NDV equals negative 9999.0. So first I need to get that raster band and get the no data value. I need to decide what my new no data value is going to be. I'm going to read the array and then I'm going to do band one equals or band one. I'm going to find where band one equals the no data value and I'm going to change that to new to the new no data value okay then I need to do ds dot get raster band one set no data value and give it new ndv okay and then I need to write the new raster band. So I need to do ds.getRasterBand1, write array, and give it band one. All right? So now the way we can check this is now we can do print ds.getRasterBand1 one get no data value and that should print out now negative 9999.0 let's go ahead and click run and see what happens okay and sure enough it printed out my negative 9999 value okay and we can go ahead here and let's print out band one before we make this operation so we can make sure that the values did actually change print band one and then we need to come down here and do print band one. And so let's go ahead and click run script. Oh, I already changed it. Um, so I could change it back by grabbing this number and putting it in here. And this should change it back. So let's go ahead and click run here. And this ought to change this back to what it was. Oh, nope, that did it right. So you can see it there and there. Now let's go to see if we'll change it back. And that has the same one both times. So we actually haven't changed the value here for some reason. We probably haven't, we haven't, probably haven't saved that correctly. So let's uh, change this back to negative 9999. Oops, that's zero click run and you can see that changes now that raster band is written okay so now let's see if we can get that to show up in QGIS all right guys I found what the problem was here before I get to it let's go ahead and just add in this copied raster 
and we'll take a look at the properties in QGIS. So let's open this up. Um, if we pull this down, we can see our no data value here, our large magnitude negative number. Let's go ahead and remove this. Okay, and the problem is right here. When we open this, the default is to open this in a read-only mode. So if we do comma one, this will open the file in update mode so we can make changes to it. So what happened is I, I had this in read-only mode. So when I made the change down here with writing the array, um, it didn't actually make the change, even though we had the no data value print out down here. Let's get rid of that line. Um, make sure you have the one here so we can update this. And now when we click run, we should get um, an array that has negative 999.0 as our no data value. So let's go ahead and click run script. That showed up here with our um, array output. If we add this file back in, we can still see that it's the same as our original file. When I open up my no data, my properties, and I come down to no data, now this is negative 9999. So that's how you can work with no data a little bit. Remember the two things we talked about is changing that no data value and then changing the no data value to np.nan, which then allows you um, to do mathematical operations without affecting that no data value and then switch it back. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, so a little bit longer video and maybe not as exciting as some of the other ones, but this is going to be super important moving forward and doing calculations. So in the next one, I'll show you how you can subtract two DEMs from each other um, using that np.nan trick to preserve the no data values without messing it up. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.